Hello, this is from Theopolis. Here I am doing camouflage for my firearm and finishing engraving class. Right now, I'm doing camo. I'm just doing a brief play around on an object. This object is galvanized steel. It was originally part of the lamp. I was going to turn it into something for my reflex bag. But this is just a demonstration. It's how I get a proper setup for it. Usually with Japanese steel is either Android electro plated on and eyes on. You can well Japanese paint which is the black stuff here because you have to grind it out first to weld it unless you have an underwater welder. That's the same thing with camo. It depends what kind of camo you're doing since I'm just spraying camo foster instead of dipping it or anything. I'm going to go through some the process, be a quick rundown. First, I'm going to give you a brief view. Safety, 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 safety. Safety. Know what you want with it, the pattern, the design. Prep as well. Prep the area. Make sure you have well light. I changed my light bulb, uh, light bulb up to a high calorie luminous. I do the one for my ceiling in my garage. Once you prep, the area, then prep the surface. Before that, you gotta December the firearm, or depending on what part of the firearm you wanna do. Now, since this is a spray on camo, I still have to follow some of the basic pattern, but some parts shouldn't be sprayed. If this was an actual firearm, and I would take apart, this would most likely be the barrel. The first thing I would do, I would mask the parts I don't want to spray and then I will plug the parts here and here the barrel bore make sure nothing goes in there but since this is an eye form this is just a demonstration right after I use this I'm going to use it for something else as well and then what I'm looking for next is any damage happen to it any pits rust anything I don't like if there's something I don't like I then need to fix that that uh use a low grit abrasive and then I gotta grind it out and then as I get over over I get higher higher grit and I get the uh, higher grit up and then I polish it to get clean. If I need to re not the surface I would. Then after I get it done I then need to degrease it. I want the surface to be clean, nothing on it. Don't want no dirt, no oil, none of that. Usually to the greenest use acetone, brake cleaner, brake fluid, or any degreasing solution. Depending on what you're doing it on, you may need a strong degreasing solution. And you may need to dip it for like 24 hours, 40 hours, or however long you need to do it. This is galvanized. Just a demonstration. What I will do is clean the surface off. I will use throttle bar air intake. It's brake cleaning fluid basically. Okay. For anything, I have my glasses. I have my mask. Depending on what substance you work with, you may need a full body mask. I have my glasses. <laughs> Usually you want to wear a nitro or powder free gloves. Do not press any spirit on the surface. Since I am degreasing this, it's going to be a quick one down. I have it down here. Go ahead. Yes, there's a lot of stuff going on in my car. One of my barrels had to be turned to a blue one. I had to make a charcoal barrel. I had to make a battery. Some stuff. And after 
Basically, my oil cooking oil that I cooked a while back, which takes a lot of work. Alright. Back to the subject. I have my glasses. I have my mask. Now, I might not be able to hear me, so I'm going to say what I'm going to do. I'm going to spray the brake cleaning fluid on it. It's still. You got one still. After I spray it, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to get a very clean front swab. And I'm going to swab it in one direction. All of it in one direction while I'm going backwards over and over to dry. Normally you let it spit to dry or you let it air dry it then you wipe down. You hope it does not get contaminated by your environment. But it's just a demonstration of right now. So. Normally, I let this hang up to air dry or let it sit for a good 30 minutes to an hour. So, next is degrees. I'm supposed to let it sit on it degrees, but since I have this for now, I'm gonna wipe it down for how speed makes you work. Normally, you sit it in a degreaser and let it sit for about a good 30 minutes to an hour or three hours. Depending on if you're using degrees that require boiling, where you have to bring the temperature up to like 100 Fahrenheit, 350 Fahrenheit, 80 Fahrenheit. Depending on what surface you do that on, you can do that to wood, plastic, or aluminum, unless you're using a white equipment to it and you can't have blue those either as a reinforcement or use hot cost and stuff because it would melt it or destroy it. You have to, if you're going to hot glue it, you have to be at a lower temperature and you can't do it for an improvement as a chemical resistance. You have to do it as a coating, like design or surface protection, not base protection. Now, usually you have to sit up air dry, there's no for no when there's no contamination and you can't touch it or you don't want to touch it with your hand much or you contaminate the surface, but this is just a quick demonstration. Next, let's add dry. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I got my camouflage. Let's pretend I got my camouflage. <laughs> That's how I got my design. Based on the pattern you want, the pattern design you get, it's best to start big, then go medium and small, or big, medium, medium, or big first, then go down or back up, down, back up. First of all, make sure your base color, the firearm itself, is at the color you want or the color you're gonna paint over. And then, next, move on to design. It's just a demonstration. Take. We're gonna start big. Big again. Let's go this way. Yeah, I'm gonna use this for a reflex bag. Actually, we're gonna be some nut shots, then we can reflex bags. 
Then it came time to punch in the face, but no. As a boxer or a Muay Thai fighter, if you're not used to getting punched, it's gonna hurt. No. As you see, since this is just straight in the straight line, I changed the direction on it. If you have stencils and stuff, you normally want to change direction and put on fully flat surface. You can let this sit for a good about 5 or 10 minutes. Long as this, the stencil is properly still down, you're good. Now I got my stencils on it. Next is, I want to put my safety gear on it again. Fast, fast, slow. Mm -hmm. right, what I'm going to do now, just in case you don't hear me, I'm going to spray my base color first. It's what the color most of the fire I'm going to be. What's going to happen now is some black would not get sprayed because I take over the black. I got brown, light brown, which is caramel color. I got red and I got blue. Don't do that. Okay. It's arclet blue, like, what's the word for it? I bought arclet spray paint so I can. Water seal my furniture, then fireproof it, or fireproof then water seal it. And then I was gonna hit RP on the top of it because it could be fireproof, smoke my furniture to work, or laminate it, whatever I'm gonna press. But that didn't happen, so I'm gonna use it for this. Right now, next, this is camouflage, just keep it standard. I'm gonna uh, start with the basic. Brown. So, I sprayed it now. Um, as you can see it? Yep, there we go. Alright, now I'm going to explain some process I should have did at the beginning. Make sure your air is well ventilated. Make sure it's have an air. When you throw away the chem when you're done, you throw away the chemicals properly to the MSDS and SDS in according to the area. Now, back to the subject at hand. Um, when you're spraying, Using a can or a spray gun or an LMVPP air gun, you make sure you want to be at the proper distance based on the coating you want. Three to four inches away is what you want. And then once you get that right distance in, you start spraying and spray in a sprinkle powder and then throughout the whole thing. The whole thing, people. 
And then you best want to do it when it's hanging up where you have no problem going around. I had it laying down on this. I have to rotate and spray, which is going to cause a coating disturbance where it might have bumps and knots in it. Which is what's going to give to my next thing. Your spraying a Dora Blue or a Syracol or any coat on it, you want it to be wet but not wet as running. You don't want to be too dry. If it's too dry, then A, is something wrong with your air gun. B, are you too far away? Or C, there's something wrong with the surface and you go back over it. If it's too wet, you're too close to it, your air gun's not thick enough, or you're putting too much on it, you're going so slow in one area you're making it wet. I was about three, four inches away, not to get six inches out because A, it's pointing downwards, not open. Now what's going to happen is, I'm going to let this dry, hopefully at that time I will also have a proper setup as well. Once it dries out completely, I will put another coat on it based on how I want it, or if it has like a rusty layer, or a layer that has bumps and knots on it, I will smooth that out and I will spray it again and again so I get the coating and the surface I want. Once this dry out, I'm gonna go to the next step. All right, that's it, right there, and that's it.